guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another How About Them Celtics video. Sam and I are recording Thursday, August 17th. Uh, and we got some layover news, some some something news about the Malcolm Brogdon trade that almost happened but never happened for Kristaps Porzingis. For those who don't know, when the Celtics were initially trading for Kristaps Porzingis, it was supposed to be a three-team deal with the LA Clippers and the Washington Wizards. Uh, but the Clippers got cold feet and decided not to trade for Brogdon, who was supposed to originally be in the deal. It's led to a bunch of drama. Obviously, the Celtics ended up trading Chris, uh, excuse me, Marcus Smart to the Grizzlies in a three-team deal for Porzingis, and Brogdon had to repair his relationship with the team, which might still be in process, but whatever. But Law Murray of The Athletic recently wrote an article. Let me, let me pull it up on the screen here. Uh, a little bit of everything. NBA's in-season tournament schedule affects the Clippers trade pursuit of James Harden. Law Murray, by the way, who writes about the Clippers, I believe, uh, for the Athletics. So that is his role. Uh, in here, he talked about the trade that almost was. Uh, the Clippers know they need to resolve the roster crunch and are running out of time to do it. The interest in Harden, uh, but to a point. But the Clippers also interested in Chris Paul reunion before he was traded to the Warriors. They then pivoted to Celtic six man of the year, Malcolm Brogdon. And we're ready to trade Marcus Morris, Amir Coffey, and the draft pick that turned into Kobe Brown. To complete the deal, but after expressing misgivings with Brogdon's injury history, the Clippers ran out of time uh, to complete the deal before the Celtics moved on to a three-team trade in which they kept Brogdon and traded Smart to the Grizzlies instead, including Harden. The Clippers have had their pulse on three possible trades to add a ball handler and resolve their roster logjam, only to keep their powder dry. So, Clippers have been unable to land that point guard that they've supposedly um, been looking for this whole summer. That first round pick that turned into Kobe Brown, by the way, uh, was the 30th pick in the draft. So it's not like it would have been anything crazy. And it probably would have gone, <clears throat> excuse me, to Washington anyways. Um, but obviously, in the end, like we know, Marcus Mark got sent to the Grizzlies. Uh, but just interesting to see the exact package they were willing to give up for Malcolm Brogdon. Um, just in hindsight, I guess, to see what the Clippers were going to give up. Yeah, the question is, what of that package would have went to the Celtics, if any? Right, because mm -hmm. a lot of it sounds like young talent that Washington probably would have wanted to pick through. Yeah, it sounds like the Celtics would have just got Porzingis, and that would have been the end of it. Maybe I'm not positive, but still lame that the Clippers pulled out. Rat list for sure. They've uh, ruined some good things in Boston because of this. I will say <laughs> this coming out now doesn't like make me angry. The weird thing which we talked about in the latest pod was Porzingis is hurt. Brogdon doesn't appear to be hurt, or at least we're not hearing more and more about him being hurt. Yeah. Yet the Clippers are the team that got cold feet because of the physicals, not the Celtics. Mm. Right. It's Especially interesting because let's see draft pick later used on Kobe Brown. So yeah, I guess that could have been a, a pick the Celtics used for Jordan Walsh. Right potentially they ended up getting the 25th pick i believe in the deal with memphis um so maybe they would have gotten that late first um i don't know though it, it is weird it feels like the clippers are being too picky almost like but then you also have to wonder like how hurt is malcolm brogdon because obviously he dealt with the tendon issue at the end of the season last year he hasn't gotten surgery on it like there's been nothing to fix it like is it just a matter of him rehabbing it and then he's fine is it him just you know resting it and then he's fine like that that's the weird part for me because the clippers very clearly need more ball handling on the roster they have russell westbrook who actually had a pretty good season for them at the end of the year past that like bones highland is fine but like they, they'd rather have a chris paul a james harden or malcolm brogdon obviously but if they were like no we don't want to give up this package for that risk of malcolm brogdon this package being pretty nothing like like Marcus Morris has been okay for them but they are very willing to get rid of him and he seemingly doesn't really want to be there with all the drama Amir Coffey's a fine player but he's not going to get regular minutes for them and then the, I think they like Kobe Brown I think Kobe Brown's a fine player but at the time like the 30th pick in the draft you, if you're the Clippers you don't <clears throat> blink at sending that out for a guy like Malcolm Brogdon so how bad is the Brogdon injury were they just being super cautious or is it worse than Celtics fans realize like I think that's something to watch because Mal Malcolm Brogdon 
was good for the Celtics SP this past season, obviously winning six man of the year. This was also like the healthiest season he's had in a long, long time, right? Like this is the most games he's played since his rookie year. He played 75 games his rookie season since then. He hasn't cracked 65 until this past year, 48, 64, 54, 56, 36, 67. So is that injury that he suffered in the playoffs or whatever last year, the tendon tear going to catch up to him this season? How many games is he going to play this season? Clearly the Clippers don't believe in him being an 82 game player. Not that he ever has been, but like, that's the part that speaks to me. Like how bad is this Brogdon injury? I hope it's not that bad. That's for sure. Cause if it is bad, then people are going to be real pissed about this trade because Boston will be extra thin at the guard spot. I guess this is mm. less of a trade package revealed reaction to, Oh my God, I can't believe Brogdon's still hurt. We kind of forgot about this video because it's a real angle heading into the season. This guy was a key contributor to your team last year. He was the sixth man of the year. He wasn't able to give you much in the conference finals, and it really hurt, especially on the back end of that series in game seven when he played. Brogdon came in the game with his messed up forearm, and uh, the wheels came off. That was the end of the season. That was the nail in the coffin. Seven or so bad minutes from Malcolm Brogdon was enough to finish them off, and they really missed him. If he could have been a contributor, that series might have went a little bit differently. Even in the games he did play in, it was like they're rolling him out there to try it out. And then it was the same story as game seven where he's just not giving you enough. And it was turning the tide in games. Yeah, I think the reason the trade package like comes into play for me is because like you look at the trade that did happen with the smart going to the Grizzlies and, and other pieces going around. That was three good players being traded. Tyus Jones going to Washington. Tyus Jones is a good player. He's a good point guard. People like everyone's saying like he should be a starter, but he's backing up John Morant. Marcus Mark going to Memphis. <clears throat> Obviously, somebody they really wanted. And then Christoph Porzingis coming off an All Star caliber season, going to the Celtics. In this trade, if it was Brogdon going to the Clippers, this would be the second Malcolm Brogdon trade where he's traded for really nothing. Right. If you think about the trade that sent him to Boston, it was Aaron Neesmith who's turning into a nice piece and a what a, a late first run pick and a bunch of nobody. Right. Yeah. Like ha Daniel Tyson that is kind of funny. sometimes plays Malcolm Brogdon being traded to the Clippers. If this trade went through Mar Marcus Morris, who would have probably got bought out by the Wizards, Amir Coffey, who let me let me check, Sam, how many minutes did Amir Coffey play this past season? You want, you want to guess for me? Four point three. Played 50 games and averaged twelve point five minutes. Shit. So. There's that. I mean, the year prior, he averaged 23. So he's really just up and down everywhere. Uh, and then the 30th pick, Kobe Brown, who, I mean, obviously the, the Wizards would have been able to choose anybody they want. But at that point, we're talking about the 30th pick. I'm pretty sure Kobe Brown actually had a pretty good summer league. Um, yeah, he averaged he was 15 someone points. someone before the draft that we had floated around as the Celtics target with Tyler Rucker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played really, really well in summer league. He averaged 15 points, 7 rebounds, 1.8 assists, shot 46% from the field and 43% from deep on six three-point attempts per game so he played well but we're talking about the 30th overall pick so brogdon back-to-back -back years even if you combine those trade packages marcus morris aaron neesmith two late first round picks for brock and brogdon like that sounds like what it should be for brogdon not two separate trades for malcolm brogdon yeah so two, you're like going through a buffet of trades and picking out what you want okay i'll have a little bit saying. of this a little bit of that oof Poor so it's just weird just getting kicked around, dude. He's like, uh, you ever see the video of the kids at the lunch table, like throwing the stuff back and forth. <laughs> and it's like, so it looks like a well-oiled machine. That's what this is. It's weird. It's just weird. Um, And the, the weirdest part is that the Clippers weren't even willing to give this up for Brogdon. They like, they said, no, we were going to, well, they were, this. but they just got scared of the physicals. Exactly. But at what point, like when they were weighing their options, they weighed, no, we don't want to give this up because of the injury over. This is nothing. Let's take the risk. They valued that they, effectively. They valued those three players more than the injury risk that comes with Brogdon. That's the red flag for me in this whole thing. Cause like <laughs> how bad is that injury for Malcolm Brogdon? Is the tendon going to be fine by the start of next season? Cause the Celtics need him to play a good six man role again next year. Right? I think the upside of the team is definitely improved. Obviously poor Zingas um, is a great player. If he can stay on the court, it'll be even better for him. Um, and I know the injury to him right now is <laughs> not helping with that, but they need Brogdon. They need that depth. Peyton Pritchard can step up a little bit. They have Delano Banton too, but the, if this tendon injury carries over into next season, it's just, it's concerning. That's all I'm saying. Because if this trade package wasn't 
risk free enough for the Clippers to take that leap. True. Then I don't know. So Morris net negative. That. Yeah, Marcus Wouldn't Morris has been a. Uh, yeah, they, they didn't want to give it Marcus Morris. Marcus Morris, by the way, uh, who averaged 11 points, four rebounds this past season, had an okay year, but his minutes, um, or he he doesn't seem very happy. I'm pretty sure he put up on like a uh, an Instagram story bashing the Clippers. <clears throat> Something. I I, there, I just know there's some drama where I don't think he really wants to be there anymore. Um, but anyways, interesting to see the actual package laid out what the clippers would have given up for brogdon the fact they didn't make it thank you all for watching subscribe to how about them celtics make sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment and i'll let sam take us out yes thank you very much for watching make sure you subscribe to the youtube channel don't miss any of our daily uploads this summer we've been putting in the work hit the notification bell leave a like leave comments we appreciate all of it you can find the full length pods on youtube as well as spotify and apple you can follow us there leave a nice five-star review Speaking of following, social media is at How About Them Seas, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. The Facebook page is just the name of the podcast. You can follow Jack on Twitter at Jack's Money NBA. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. That's it for us. Bye. Jack, Jack.